Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. And welcome back to another Ilmfeed podcast with your host Shabir Hassan. Uh, I am here, alhamdulillah, today uh, with a very, very dear brother of mine, someone who I haven't met on many occasions, but I feel like already, mashallah, we have a very close relationship. And uh, he is all the way from Turkey. Our beloved Turkey, uh, where so many of us we love visiting, where there's so much, mashallah, of our Islamic history and heritage there. He's from there, subhanAllah. He's been there, living there for such a long time, but he's now in London. And obviously, we're going to talk about as well why is he here in London uh, for the remainder of the year? What is he doing? What is his plans? Uh, and of course, so many other things. So it's going to be a really interesting show today with our dear brother Hafiz Osman. Bustansi, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. How are you? Alhamdulillah, I'm good. Thank you for having me here. Alhamdulillah, it's, it's, a, it's a pleasure to have you on Ilmfeed, on yeah, the that's podcast. My pleasure. MashaAllah. I know when, when, when we first met, you mentioned straight away, as soon as we met each other in the in the tour, yeah. the Rahma tour, you said, Oh, brother, I recognize you from, sure. from Ilmfeed. And MashaAllah, you've been following Ilmfeed yeah. uh, for some time. And obviously. Actually, very interesting. Before yeah. coming to London, it was just perhaps two years ago okay. I started to follow Ilfit. Yeah. Even though I didn't know how to speak English. Okay. Because I wanted to look at the you know, how Muslims are, you know, acting in the UK or overseas yeah, yeah, countries. Yeah. It was a good chance to me. Mashallah, yeah, mashallah. And it's a pleasure to meet you. Uh, like I said, it was just we, we, we only saw each other a few times because of the tour, alhamdulillah. Yeah. Uh, but we've kept in in touch since, alhamdulillah. Sure. So it's been very nice to 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 be to be in contact with you. And uh, you know, I've I've been following your work as well, mashallah. Uh, and I'm sure many of our our viewers as well um, have come across your your beautiful recitations. Thanks. And we're going to talk about that as well because obviously being in Turkey, slightly different. You know, I've I've worn you can see today something yeah. a bit different, right? What yeah. what is this? What would you call it we in Turkey? We call it in Turkey jubba. Jubba. Yeah. Okay. So, so how is it different? Because like what I'm wearing underneath, we would call it a jubba hmm. as well. So what, how's it? Because I've seen one. So when I, I've been to Istanbul. I went last yeah. year and I've seen the imams. They have a specific type of hat. Yeah. Okay. And then they have this that they wear even on top of like shirt, trousers. They would just put this jubba mm -hmm. on top. Actually, this is the, how to say, like the original cloth when Imam uh, wants to lead the prayer. Okay. And they always wear jubba. Okay. Uh, no matter what they wear under the jubba. Yeah. And the thing that we put on our head is sarik. Sarik. Uh, sarik we call that. Okay. Actually, you know, the, this is the sunnah of the Prophet. Sarik so, we call that. Yeah. And but it has a very different shape to what mm -hmm. you would find other for example uh in egypt as haris they have yeah. a specific or morocco or you know see what i mean i think it comes to differences of cultural things yeah yeah yeah. because at the ottoman empire times uh mostly the group of ulama the group mm. of sciences used to wear jubba but mm. right now this is just specific for imams when really? they were when they lead the prayer but it is it could be seen at the street also. For example, when you go to Istanbul, especially yeah, yeah, yeah. Charshamba. Charshamba, yeah. This is yeah, where yeah, you yeah, bought yeah, that, yeah. right? Yes, exactly. I went there. Exactly, yeah, yeah, alhamdulillah. People wear Everyone's it. wearing it there. Yeah, because of they believe that this is the sunnah of the Prophet. And when people look at you, people remind Islam. People mm. uh, remind the Prophet Muhammad. That's why we are wearing this. Mm. They say that one and also as we talked uh, imams are wearing yeah, they yeah, yeah. the prayer this is yeah special for turkey egyptians are wearing mm. different style but the thing that you wear inside under the jubba i mean mostly saudi people wear that right yeah 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 yeah, yeah. and but it is rare to find in turkey people really? not wearing th that much yeah. interesting very yeah, interesting. interesting and even when i traveled to bosnia recently Oh, yeah. uh, the imams same because obviously there's you have the Ottoman uh, influence there yeah. and the background so very similar the hat uh, wearing the same jubba yeah there. I've been there uh, I saw the same exactly. yeah and a lot of people they are actually they speak Turkish and Arabic as well I was very surprised many of them speak very good Arabic uh, because they've studied mashallah so I think Bosnia is another very interesting place uh, I have been I went to Bosnia, I guess, two years ago. Okay. I felt exactly like... <laughs> at home. I, I'm at home right now. I didn't... Because I live in Bursa. Bursa yeah. 
very similar to Bosnia. Yeah. Especially uh, the capital of Bosnia. Um, very similar. I didn't feel I am different place or I am in European countries. Yeah, 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 definitely. And when I saw imams, look, they are <laughs> exactly like our imams. Same. So and I'm, I had a conversation with them about Ottoman yeah. and its influences and people. Alhamdulillah, it was very good to be there for me. Mm, Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. So tell us a bit about uh, Bursa, you said. So what is Bursa like? I haven't yeah. been there. I went to obviously Istanbul, traveled around Istanbul when I went to Turkey last year. But uh, I've heard uh, very good things about Bursa. I would identify uh, Bursa as the dawn of civilization of Ottoman Empire. Okay. You know what I mean? Yeah. Because actually currently I live in a small district mm. which related to Bursa, which name is Iznik. Iznik, you know, I've heard. Yeah, have yeah, you heard okay. that? Yeah, I've heard it. Yeah. From history. Yeah. Firstly, from Bilejik, Sorut, mm -hmm. when Ottoman Empire was Sorut, established, yeah, yeah. right? They came to Iznik and they established Ottoman Empire mm. in Iznik. Thereafter, they conquer, conquest, conquer. conquered, yeah. yeah. They conquered Bursa. Mm. They made Bursa the capital. Okay. Uh, in the time of Yildirim Bayezid. Okay. Uh, it was, I guess, the third Sultan of Ottoman. Right. Thereafter, they... Uh, Passionate. I mean, how to say? They, you know, wanted to conquer, conquer uh, Constantinople okay. at that time, Istanbul. Yeah, 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 Istanbul. And um, but they lived there more than for a, for a, for a hundred years, perhaps. Mm -hmm. That's why many mosques, many different historical places could be found in Bursa. Okay. Very similar to Istanbul, mm -hmm. but you can see the differences between Bursa and Istanbul right. because Istanbul. Is something else, you know, yeah, really yeah, different. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The top of Ottoman Empire, you know, yeah. Ottoman's economy was great. Mm. That's why it influenced the historical places and the people's life. But Bursa, compared to Istanbul, a bit more, you know, humble. Mm, Small see. mosques related yeah. to Ottoman history. But there is a mosque, which name is Grand Mosque. Okay. Uh, in Bursa? Ulujami, yeah, in Bursa. Yeah. Ulujami, very famous. Uh, Yildirim Bezid uh, commands others to establish, to set up this mosque. Alhamdulillah. Because it was a, how do you, ahd, what do you say? Promise. Yes, yeah. It was his promise before conquering the Bursa. Mm. He says, if I can, you know, get in Bursa, I'm going to establish 20 mosques. Wow, right? okay. Thereafter, when the conquest took place, he asked to... Ulama, mm. the different uh, Islamic scholars. What should I do? I promised, mm. and Alhamdulillah, we conquered. Mm. Some of them said, you should do what you are supposed to do because you promised. But one of them said, very wise, uh, you know, offer. He said, oh, Sultan, you promised, but rather than building too many mosques, you built a mosque with 20 tombs, you said. Tombs, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, 20 okay, tombs. Okay, interesting. Yeah, Alhamdulillah. That's why it is. it has a different architectural style. Wow. When you get in, 20 tombs. 20 domes, yeah? Yeah, domes. Very, like, magnificent when you get mm. in. Even still, when you look at from Uluda, which is yeah. the great mountain, it, it appears with a magnificent, you know, beautiful scene you yeah. can see that even like with compared to b big buildings yeah you can see its uh, beauty subhanallah How that's very know? interesting to know yeah. so definitely next time i go <laughs> to yeah, turkey go, i have to go to the grand mosque in uh, inshallah. In, in bursa definitely inshallah so inshallah. that's it's very interesting that's the thing it's like everywhere you go i felt like in turkey because i had uh, i made a friend there really? when i was there nice. and uh, mashallah he's studying arabic there so mm -hmm. we, we we got along very well and he was taking us around and it's like everywhere you go there's something there's yeah. some history there's some heritage the ottoman you know this sultan did this you go to the masjid the sultan has a story behind it it was because of his son he did this yeah. you know uh, even like subhanallah there's like um, i don't know what it is you know like you have taps outside yeah yeah what we is we call the? them cheshma okay. it is <clears throat> where you can drink water yeah because it's like wakf or something. Yes, wakf. Yeah. Exactly. This is... Um, but 
all of them mostly uh, were built by the sultans mm. because the ideology of Ottoman Empire is when you let people live in a good life they will let you means they will let your government or your country live okay you know what I mean? this is yeah, the yeah. theme of Ottoman Empire yeah, yeah. Um, you know how much you offer people good things okay yeah. you will find you will also get the good back good back yeah. exactly mm. and uh, you know uh, there is a how to say kind of not manager but someone who sultans used to uh, see good opinion mm. ulama we call them yeah. you know when you when you go to bilajik so mm. uh, there was um, we call awliyaullah mm. from the friends of allah mm. He says to Osman, the establisher of Ottoman mm. Empire, he says, Oh my son, you know, oh my son, give a good, how to explain, it's a bit hard, I'm trying to That's translate, okay. you know. Yeah, uh, let people, as I said before, let people live in a good manner, in a good lifestyle. Mm. Thereafter you will find, you know, you are giving them goods and you are acquiring good things mm. from them. That's why uh, coming across many, many uh, things that offer a good life for people is mm. seen in Turkey a lot, especially historical places, Bursa, Istanbul, Iznik, or Bilecik, yeah. or Bosnia. Even Bosnia, I saw yeah. many, you know, Vakf, you said, yeah, yeah, yeah. Çeşme, tubs where people can drink. It's all free. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Even, even what? Very interesting. They used to build a house for birds when yeah. they built a mosque. Mm. For example, on the wall, you see architectural, you know, houses yeah. which um, belongs to uh, birds. Mm. You know what so I mean? They built that, yeah? They, yeah, made they it. build, they make Thinking, very small, yeah. but it shows the mercy. <clears throat> I, I, Not I've just seen for that people. A lot. Yeah, yeah, I've seen that a lot in Turkey. I feel like towards animals, there's this this is kindness Ilmfi did a video with yeah. uh, Mesut Ozil the oh, Arsenal yeah, player great. he kissed the bread and then apparently oh, there's yeah. this tradition there's this like tradition behind it and going back to Ottomans because we call uh, bread is holy mm. you know when it just dropped we took it like we kissed because it comes from Allah it is like uh, like as Quran yeah because we try not to, you know, take or put the Quran under our feet. Yeah, yeah, because yeah, yeah. these tradi traditional things, we, it comes from the respectful action towards mm, the Islamic mm, things. Of course. Yeah. Yeah, there's many good things. I mean, that's the thing with tradition or culture is that it is not necessarily it's from the Sunnah, but it's a good thing. It's a nice thing. You're showing respect. Sure. You're showing honor towards something. And, and it was uh, that's why I think that video, everyone was interested someone threw the bread at him and he picked it up he kissed it showing respect this is sure. from Allah it's provision from Allah SubhanAllah it's beautiful so that's exactly. what I'm saying it's like everything you go there if you don't know if you just go there just to visit you know I just want to go shopping and here and there okay it's nice but if you go there I think with the interest I want to see history I want to learn more uh, I think that you'll benefit a lot. Uh, when I was there, actually, we met a sheikh mm. in Istanbul mm -hmm. and he asked us, so how long are you all here? I was with my friends. How long are you here for? And I said, yeah, we're here for like six days. And he's laughing at us. Really? <laughs> he's laughing. I said, what? sheikh, why are you laughing for? Because mm. he was, uh, he, mashallah, he obviously, because we, we couldn't speak Turkish. He, yeah. uh, uh, and obviously he doesn't speak English. So we were speaking in Arabic. Oh, so yeah, I said to sheikh, Limada tadhak? Why are you laughing for? Yeah. He said, even if you spend one month in Istanbul, you will not be able to benefit <laughs> no from way. it. He said that every corner is so huge, yeah. there's so much history behind it. Even, I think, for example, you call, you call people who live in London, Londoners. Londoners, Can yeah, we yeah, call yeah. Istanbulers? <laughs> 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 Even Istanbulers can't recognize where they live, you yeah, know. Every corner, <laughs> as you said, has a meaningful mm. uh, architectural things. To They are waiting to be discovered yeah exactly yeah yeah yeah. very interesting yeah. and so many masajid you know so many different mosques and every every mosque has a story um obviously you have the normal 
the the popular places that you go to Istanbul, everyone visits Hagia Sophia, everyone goes to the Blue Mosque, everyone, you know, there's some places everyone goes, but then I think we forget about there's so many other mm. hidden, hidden places, we hidden, could say, yeah, definitely. Exactly. But very honestly, I would say that when you get in the mosque, which mm. built in the time of Ottoman Empire, yeah. <clears throat> it uh, affects you a lot. Mm. Atmosphere of the mosque is different from new mosques. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know why. Because uh, perhaps because of the structure. Mm. But even even if it is the same, it, it gives me, I don't know, historical sense, you know? Yeah. You feel yourself oh, at the time of like old times, yeah, at the yeah, time yeah, of yeah. Ottoman, perhaps. I feel like that. I felt like that as well. And I think obviously because of more people are interested now in uh, Turkey, Ottoman history because of, you know, TV series. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. Everyone's interested now. Yeah. So, you know, everyone wants to know who is Osman. Never, mm -hmm. you know, before it was like, it was just a name, Ottomans. We know this name. But now it's like everyone wants to find out who is Osman because there's a series now, yeah. Osman, the son of, you know, Ertuğrul, Ertuğrul yeah. uh, etc. So everyone's now interested. And it's a good thing as well because what it's doing is, is that it's inspiring people to learn this very important integral part of uh, yeah our regarding osman um very interesting story mm. i don't know its authenticity but it is a very touchy touching story before he became the leader of ottoman mm. he went to a sheikh a scholar he visited yeah and they offered him a, you know mm, they have they offered him a normal uh, what do you say? Like a room? Room, yeah, exactly. Yeah. I forgot. <laughs> they offered uh, for him a stay, to, just okay. to sleep. Just a normal room to stay. But he saw a Qur he saw the Quran in the room. Yeah. He <clears> couldn't <throat> sleep till you know till the dawn of the sun. Okay. But some people say the time when he couldn't sleep was for six hours. Okay. This is time for Ottoman Empire, you know, 6th century. Oh, I see. Because of the respectful action, he couldn't sleep. Because mm. Quran was there, he couldn't put it, like, I see. the top. Okay, okay, okay. It's like an empty room. So yes, he okay. and he couldn't sleep. The time was for 6 hours. Mm. <laughs> but it, very interesting, okay, we can't yeah, yeah, say... Yeah. But it shows, again, their respectful actions towards Islamic yeah, things. Yeah, very interesting. Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. Yeah, there's so much so much to learn, I think. And okay. uh, I think it's good to look into these things and, and take different stories uh, from uh, the Ottoman history that is available. Even in London now, you go everywhere, Ottoman this, you know, Ottoman restaurant is named after <laughs> yeah. Ottomans, every Turkish food, everyone's trying to name their restaurants after this because everyone's interested. Alhamdulillah. Because yeah, yeah. If you if you lose your history, what do you have then? Right. Mm. You need to keep your language, yeah. history, <coughs> and society if you want to be in the stage yeah. in this world. That's why people firmly need to know their history. Mm. Even though you was you was you were born here, it doesn't matter because this is your identity. You are a Muslim. You need to know your history, and without Ottoman, someone can't write a history of the mm. world how would you say in turkey the turkish people themselves do they do you think that most of them know their own history or not i don't think i can i can't say they mostly know what their yeah. history is but slowly it is changing okay thanks to different you know tv shows yeah and different series yeah uh, alhamdulillah it's getting better Mm. But some of the real history couldn't be found in the books. Mm. <laughs> it's sometimes hidden yeah. in somewhere else, and you need to find out more. Really, and but it is it is going to be better, inshallah. Hopefully, yeah, inshallah. What yeah. about education in in Turkey? Because obviously you studied in Turkey. Yes, Very I studied, and I think you're the fir you're actually the first guest that we have. The Turkish. Uh, are you the first Turkish guest? Maybe, yeah, <laughs> maybe, be, yeah. yeah. And we had recently Rashad, who's the act. He was an actor on Ertuğrul, oh, yeah. but he's he's Bosnian. But okay. he learned Turkish, and then he lived in Turkey. Wow. He learned uh, Turkish in like one year, mm -hmm. and then he started acting. He did a few episodes in Ertuğrul, but he's not Turkish. He's half 
Bosnian, half Australian. I think you are maybe the first Turkish guest. And obviously Thanks. you're the first person that uh, has studied in Turkey as well. We've had, mashallah, different people studied in Egypt, Medina, you know, Senegal, Africa, etc. Right? So you're the first. So this is good. This is interesting. So <laughs> let, let's let's find out what was uh, you know edu- what's ed- what was your kind of studies like, education like in Turkey, and has it changed because mm-hmm. over the last fifteen, twenty years, you know, going back to when you were a child, have things changed over over the years? Yeah. Um, at first. Mm. I studied just normal uh, at secondary and primary schools. Mm. It was just normal education. Okay. But <coughs> being a Hafiz, I would say, I studied at high school, we called Imam and Khatib. Yeah. Imam al Khutaba. Okay. In Arabic. Um, the education system consists of Islamic sciences yeah. and worldly sciences, like math, yeah. other things, bi- biology and philosophy, philosophy and, yeah. others. But for me, before getting into uh, Imam Khatib, I, I thought by myself, I said, look, okay, if I study math and other worldly sciences, I will acquire things just belong to this world. Mm. But what about hereafter? Mm. Thereafter, I decided to go Imam Khatib. Then we studied the tafsir, hadith, kalam, Aqaid, but not very deeply. Okay. Not very deeply, mm. I can't say. Alhamdulillah, the reason was <laughs> obviously my voice. <laughs> because mm. when I went to mosque, all the elderly people said, Oh, you have a good voice, let the prayer, <laughs> you know, do uh, other tasbihat. Yeah, you know. yeah, yeah. Alhamdulillah, that's why I wanted to utilize by my voice for. Islamic sciences. Mashallah. But when I got into high school, I realized, oof, there are many different things. Yeah. It is. It doesn't just uh, require good voice. Of you know, course, yeah. Arabic. Yes. Memorizing the Quran. Tajweed. Tajweed. And, yeah. Other things. Alhamdulillah. But when I get into uh, university, mm. we call al kulliyat al ilahiyat or the divinity. Okay. Schools, yeah. theology. It's like religious say. school, yeah. Yeah, religious school. Yeah. Um, I decided to, you know, learn Arabic mm-hmm. because at high school I memorized the Quran. Alhamdulillah. Simultaneously, I used to get normal education at yeah. high school. Thereafter, at the at the in the evening, I used to memorize the Quran. Yeah. Alhamdulillah. But I decide. I thought, look, I am memorizing i am reciting but i don't understand what i am mm. reciting that's why i need to you know understand what quran says to me mm. alhamdulillah arabic education is getting better and better day by day in turkey especially there are different uh, universities which yeah. we call like uh, waqf universities okay waqf not belong to the government mm. the country as like private universities yeah okay and obviously their education is a bit better than mm. public universities <laughs> but alhamdulillah uh, especially knowing arabic being able to speak arabic uh, broadens our minds yeah thereafter okay if i can speak to arabic if i can speak arabic just i can speak to people who can speak arabic but what about others Mm. Quran says to me, look, for example, uh, the, how to say, the teaching of Quran is universal. Yes. Not specific for a nation, mm. right? That's why I decided to learn English. Mm. But I can't say same thing for English. I think we are a bit weak in terms of learning English in Turkey. Okay. I think the majority of us can't speak yeah, yeah. Different languages, <laughs> just one language. But alhamdulillah, uh, looking at different fundamental sources of uh, Islam yeah. related to Arabic language, mm. uh, thereafter looking at Western approaches towards Islam mm. and putting them together and speaking with experimental 
um, approaches yeah. is very different, alhamdulillah. Yeah, alhamdulillah, it's good. SubhanAllah, your uh, journey is very similar to mine. The way really? exactly how I did it was yeah. high school, uh, during the day, normal, getting normal education, in the evening, doing mm-hmm. my hifs and memorizing the Quran. Yeah. And then after that, you know, going further, studying more. So it's very similar in that sense. So alhamdulillah, it's good to hear that you've got that in Turkey. Another interesting thing that you mentioned is I've realized Turks, even Bosnians, there's something about the voice, <laughs> very distinct, very unique, very yeah. powerful. When um, have you been to uh, the new the Cambridge Mosque here? Have you been there? No. So the Imam there, he is also Turkish. Yeah, Bosnian. And Turkish. yeah, there's one Bosnian Imam, one one Turkish Imam. So the Turkish Imam, well, both of them amazing, mashallah. The Turkish Imam, Imam Ali, when he recited in Salat al Maghrib, I went there recently. It was in the U, and I'm saying this. I've been, I travelled mm. all around the UK. I've been to different mosques. But that recitation was one of the best I ever heard. Wow, mashallah. great. It was Good so powerful. I was like, whoa, where am I right now? I'm not in <laughs> oh, the UK. Wow. It's amazing. And even when I went to Turkey, but with different mosques, and then when they're reciting, mashallah, amazing. I went to different mosques, whether it's Blue Mosque. I went to another masjid. I think it's a new one. Uh, masjid, I think it's like Zainab or something like that. It's like a new, it looks very, it's like mm. a new modern design. Mm. Um, so anyway, I went there. And there's something different. I can't I can't say the same about for example in my culture coming from the more Asian background Bangladesh Pakistani I can't say the same even with going to Arabia you know going to Mecca Medina there's something about it. what is it there's something about the voice it's very unique Alhamdulillah why uh, let me give an example mm. again it is related to what we talk a lot about yeah, yeah of course <laughs> <laughs> but even today when you want to become uh, imam of big mosques yeah you need to have a good voice yeah and um, okay it comes from the but it's God, not it's not just it's good given. it's not just good voice it's not sweet voice it's this power behind it are you trained <laughs> like do you get trained or is it just natural actually both I guess okay again it is you need to make an effort on that mm. to make it more beautiful mm. but if you don't have the skill yeah nothing to do mm. but if you realize it when you are in early ages mm. uh, as I did actually if you try or if you pay attention to your voice in order to make it more beautiful mm. you need to do some different things and so. These are a bit, you know, secret things. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you need to firstly listen a lot. Okay. You have to listen, such as big Quras, yeah, Abdul Samad, yeah. different, you know, you know yeah, all yeah. of them. Uh, thereafter, you need to imitate. Mm. The first stage is for me. This is my understanding: is imitation. Okay. Because there are people reciting very amazingly. And if you want to be one of them, mm. you need to follow them. And this way is not sitting and taking notes. No, mm, that's different. Mm, mm. This is oral and listening. Yeah, yeah. listening is, a, is um, very crucial. <coughs> so, but Tajweed and Makharij al khuruf we called. Yes, you need to be in front of your teacher because he, need, yeah. he needs to listen to you. And after he needs to correct you. Yeah. But voice, I think 70% comes from your nature. Yes. Yeah. yeah Got given uh, skill. Thereafter, if you, you know, make an effort on that, you will have a beautiful recitation at the end. I guess. Mm. But again, you, I mean, we need to make the oh Allah, please beautify our voice yeah, yeah. in order for us to recite in the best way. Yeah. the Quran as much as we can why I guess this hadith in Abu Dawud لم يتغنى القرآن بصوتكم فليس منا those who you know don't recite Quran in a beautiful way they are not from us mm. this is what Prophet says alayhi salatu so, so. and زينوا القرآن بصوتكم mm. recite the Quran in the best beautifully, way yeah, yeah. beautifully Inshallah. I um, agree with you in the sense that there is a uh, a lot of it is going to be God-gifted talent. Yes. A lot of it is, is going to be a, a large part. That doesn't mean that if you don't have the talent, you can't 
still do well. Like you said, it's going to take practice, uh, well, imitation, effort, uh, definitely. But then you mentioned also an interesting word. You said the secrets. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and you know, uh, you know, when in, uh, in 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 English we always say that you never reveal your secrets. If you have a skill, <laughs> you keep it, right? But maybe we can get some percentage of that from um, you. <laughs> for example, swimming is one of them swimming yeah very interesting isn't it really okay why because you need to have a good breath during your recitation mm. long breath is an indispensable part of your mm. recitation uh, because there are different long verses during your recitation if you can't manage your breath yeah you'll fail and during my childhood i used to swim a lot mm. that's why i realized oh i have a <coughs> long you know, breath, yeah, yeah, you yeah, say, yeah. right? Like stamina. Stamina, yeah. Okay. When you take your breath, there are some methods to keep it in your stomach. Oh, okay. You you can't give it back immediately. You right. need to keep it. Mm. And you need to manage. But without, you know, uh, messing up tajweed yes, and maharaj, yes, yes. the main thing is tajweed. Oh, that absolutely. You yeah. need to put upon it your voice your maqamat mm. but i studied maqamat also mm. uh, during my uh, high school education yeah. i went to um, maqamat lessons for two years mm. we learned different maqamat different styles uh, but again uh, your progress depends on your skill yeah, yeah someone yeah. for example even they listen a hundred times they can't imitate but someone listens just once yeah, they, they can. can do it yeah. very interesting interesting swimming one of them that after uh, for example bef- before coming here i used to listen mahir al makri for okay. example okay. during my journey yeah yeah he's one of my favorites from the haram yeah alhamdulillah yeah, he has really good voice and when i was a child i used to listen a lot yeah his recitations and uh, why because if your air gets used to listen different styles mm, mm, mm. you if if someone wants uh osman if can you re- can you recite like in the style of mahir al makli you need to recall mm. the voice mm. immediately in your brain it happens <coughs> very immediate suddenly in yeah. your mind but um swimming i said imitating yeah what else <laughs> <laughs> you tell you tell us you're the secret guy here <laughs> you're the man of secrets um and but the, the imitating is uh, again like you said when you recall it obviously you can only recall it if you've listened a lot of a times. lot of times you can't just you know because yeah. you have to know certain places they might stretch like this or they might you know uh do you know their tune is like this so will cough towards the end you know there's there's different things and if you haven't listened i don't think you can just make it up yourself exactly the cop it could be the answer for those who ask uh, how can I be like this mm. my answer is listening sacrificing yeah keen into I mean like be, be passionate of yeah. be passionate about mm. learning new you know styles and recitations mm. you have to love at first what you are doing yeah right? yeah definitely and since my childhood this is what i am trying to be successful mm. that's why you need to sac- sacrifice even for worldly manners yeah we we do a lot right mm. but when it comes to uh, things related to hereafter or islamic sciences we need to make effort a lot mm. because i mean even think about it like singers they spend their whole life practicing yes you know training so when it comes to quran we should try even harder you know because there's something great a great reward in this and different secret one is <laughs> <laughs> this is my inspiration yeah uh reading the biography of big quras what mm. they did okay what they where they went to you know acquire this knowledge what did they do learning secret things because these are experience right mm. someone experienced and someone became a successful yeah, yeah, uh, yeah reciter how did they manage and that's why uh, biography books yeah. could be very influential for those who want to recite mm. any any examples wisdoms from uh, anyone <laughs> that anyone that you've read any qali that you've read and thought yeah that's i want to be like that or i want to 
make the same effort as they do. <laughs> Anything in particular? Yeah, particularly, you know, when you write <coughs> or when you search on YouTube or in, yeah. on, on when you Google Quran, it will appear, it will show you who? Abdul Samet. Abdul Basit of the Samet. Abdul Basit yes, of the Samet. Of course. He was very influential. This is my habit. When a person became successful in their region, in their field, I tend to look at their life. Why Allah, you know, why Allah made them as a role model person for mm. us? They must done something different from others. Sorry. Right? Yeah. What I found in the life of Abdul Samad was before reciting, he prepare he used to prepare himself what he is going to recite. Mm -hmm. For example, if it is going to be from the chapter of Maryam, he you know makes may he used to make himself okay, I'm going to recite the words of Allah. I need to be very humble. Mm -hmm. I need to feel as if it is going to reveal upon me. Mm -hmm. This is the secret perhaps uh, this is the secret of voice, his voice. Mm. You know, that is, this is my sen Okay, this is my sentence. Let me translate because I used to say it in Turkish. Uh, if you don't have inside of yourself, you can't give it to others. Okay. Say it in Turkish. We have many Turkish viewers as well. <laughs> Kendisinde olmayan başkasına veremez. Means, if you don't have you can't give it to others. Mm. First, you need to, you know, acquire it in your heart, in your life, in your lifestyle. Look at the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Even sometimes he didn't pr preach. Mm. He didn't he didn't preach people, but they became Muslim. Mm. Just by looking at his face, so just by know. looking at his, you know, appear appearance. Character and those things, yeah. Why? Because Prophet ﷺ, perhaps before he, we know the period of revelation. Yeah. For example, he tried to uh, memorize the Quran quickly. Mm. Mm. Don't you know uh, move your uh, lips quickly yeah, yeah, yeah. because this is on us to teach you. Of course. Allah says in Surah Qiyamah, and <clears throat> that's why in Abdul Samad's life. I found very interesting things. One of them was this one. I mean, mm -hmm. before reciting, perhaps half an hour before, he kept silent. He didn't speak to anyone. Then after, he like ponder mm. what he's going to recite. It must be the very influential to others. Mm -hmm. Because, you know, some people speak, but you can't feel, you know, but some people say, I don't know, just few words, but okay. it can change your life, mm, right? There's passion, there's something yes. behind it, something, yeah, it's amazing. Is it true? I don't know, I've heard this, I don't know if it's true, about uh, about Qari uh, Abdul Basit, that uh, one of his methods of practicing was he used to like walk up like hills, mountains, mm. oh, and reciting, doing be. that to, to work on his, you know, prolonging I his think breath. that's related to swimming. Yeah, also. similar it's, it, because it's like basically any physical we're uh, saying activity is going to help. Yeah, with these because things. yeah, you need to be strong, you know. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Because you, if you if you try to keep your breath, you have to be strong, and that's why it requires practicing a lot. I didn't hear that. I didn't uh, mm -hmm. know that you mentioned. Could be yeah. But you're you're saying it makes sense, though. Makes it? sense. Like it makes sense. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. So how long can you say that? Uh, the longest <laughs> you can uh, hold your breath while you're I reciting. Think that was a video that we made uh, with guys in Turkey. Yeah. It was, I think, I don't remember, but 45 or 50 seconds. Yeah, that yeah. seems to be, from but what I've this seen. This is not outstanding because I saw many videos more than a minute, you know. <laughs> but even then, I mean, come on, 45, 50 seconds. I struggle five, six seconds, you know, I'm, I'm finished 10 seconds. Khalas, I'm that. done. But uh, let me mention him. Yeah. Uh, he, you know him, yeah. uh, Abu um, Ayub. Uh, Ayub, yeah. Ayub Asif. Ayub Asif. Yeah, yeah. I <laughs> asked him yeah. as you asked me these questions. 
brother, how do you manage this? You know, he t- what he says was practicing, bro. Practicing. Yeah. That's it. If you practice a lot, you will acquire mm. what you want. Definitely. But Hamdan. like I said, uh, mashallah, I mean, 45, 50 seconds is not Hamdan. it's not a small achievement. It's it's still a long time to hold it. Yeah. So one of the first secrets you gave, the breath you mentioned, I've always seen it, every Qari that I've watched, because I always watch them, because I can't do it. Yeah. Honestly, I can't do it. Uh, but I watch, I'm still interested. What is their method? Every time yeah. you see that, yeah? Uh, and then they just go 45, 50, 55 <laughs> seconds. I'm just like, subhanAllah. <laughs> I try it. No, it doesn't work. But so even the shape of your posture, posture, right? yeah, 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 posture yeah. is very crucial. So if, I can't, you can't. If you slouch. try to recite like this, you can't. Slouching you know, and because you need to make your body like this to get okay. a long breath. Yeah, and you need to take it from your no- noise, nose, yeah, noise, nose, yeah, not mouth, not. Okay. You need okay. to like, and you need to. You know, after that, manage yeah, yeah, your yeah. breath. Wow, okay. So there's like a whole like science behind the there qira'a, is. yeah? Absolutely. Wow. Okay, interesting. So on that point, I know uh, so many of our viewers <laughs> and listeners, they're now interested because we're talking about it. But we want we want to maybe perhaps see it live, okay? Uh, so I, And I want to see it, mashallah. I always enjoy your recitation. So maybe let's start with... Let's start with that one then. Let's start with you just reciting. We're going to come to, imit- we spoke about imitation and I want to see that as well. <laughs> That's different. That's a different test. This oh, is yeah. the live Usman Bustansi, Hafiz Usman <laughs> test live on Ilmfeed, inshallah, yeah. for all of our viewers, inshallah. Um, so let's try that one first. Just inshallah yourself, just getting into the zone and uh, maybe showing us how the how the Qura did it and how they held their breath. Just demonstrating that. And then after we'll come to uh, the others, inshallah. Okay. I mean, uh, just for example, for just one verse, you mean? Or? However you want to do it, inshallah, yeah. Uh, just normal recitation? Or? No, I, we, we want to see we want to see the method okay. when it comes to holding your breath. Okay. Yes. Then after the reciting <coughs> the verse? Yes, yes okay. inshallah. <coughs> والشمس وضحاها والقمر إذا تلاها والنهار إذا جلاها والليل إذا يغشاها والسماء وما بناها والأرض وما طحاها ونفس وما سواها Allah <laughs> Akbar. <laughs> mashallah, mashallah. That's amazing. How? What? What are you? What are you feeling at that point? You know when you get to the, to the end, what are you feeling at that point? At that point, you don't have any breath. <laughs> it's just like, everything's going. It's just yeah, all of them. You are using, but wisely, you know. But you know, I've seen um, some Qur'an. So while I'm watching them, I can tell, okay, they're getting to the end now. Like, they're, they're going to run out of breath. But then it's like, they get to the end, and they, when they end the verse, they give <clears throat> everything, and they end it, stretch it. And it's like, how did you do that? It's like, you can tell they're ready to finish, <laughs> yeah. but then they give an extra five seconds so it's like it's i'm just interested to know how that you know <laughs> <laughs> yeah it is a bit hard for yeah. me to you know even explain, explain yeah because you need to feel that emotion in your yeah. body and during your dis- recitation but i don't know it, it gives you different emotions of you, course, know? Of you course. need to <clears throat> at the same time focusing on what you recite mm. you need to manage your breath you need to think about the meaning of the verses yeah but that I think that after a while, it is becoming like kind of automatic. Mm. Yeah. But mainly, I tend to focus on the meaning. Mm. When you focus on that, other things come automatically. Subhanallah. That's amazing. I think it's a very, 
very important lesson for us, uh, for all of us, reciting the Quran. It's not just about reciting yeah. tilawa of the Quran. It's also pondering, internalizing, understanding. Exactly. I think that is a different feeling. It's a different feeling. Completely. Exactly, because Allah says in Surah Qamar, وَلَقَدْ يَسَّرُنَا الْقُرْآنَ لِلذِّكْرِ فَهَلْ مِنْ مُتَّكَ mm. And we eased Quran, we made easy mm. Quran for you to understand, comprehend. Mm. Is there anyone who tries to understand that? Mm. Actually, what the verse tells us, ponder, think about that. Yeah. فَإِنَّمَا يَسَّرُنَاهُ بِلِسَانِكِ Indeed, we made it, we made easy, uh, we made the Qur'an mm. easy for you to understand. Yes, yeah. فَهَلْ مِنْ مُدَّكِرٍ أَفَلَا تَعْقِلُونَ Yeah. Don't you reflect? It's posted all over the Qur'an, all yeah. of these verses. Yeah, at yeah. the end of the verses, if you look at it, it says us very hidden things. Mm. أَفَلَا يَتَدَبَّرُونَ الْقُرْآنَ yeah. Don't they, as you said, ponder mm. about Quran? Allah. Ah. These are the questions. Yeah. Actually, answers already be known, but Allah wants us to reflect upon these verses. Definitely. May Allah make us among those I mean, who I mean, are I understanding the Quran. I forgot to ask you as well. How long uh, did it take for you to even finish your memorization of the Quran? Uh, yeah, Alhamdulillah. <laughs> I started to memorize the Quran when I was seventeen. Yeah. I finished it it takes it took me like for one and a half year. Oh mashallah. Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. Uh, I'm still refreshing, revising every yeah, day. Yeah. For example, yesterday I recited two juice. Uh, yeah, two juices. tenth <laughs> uh, and eleventh yeah. juice. And today I'm going to recite twelfth of yeah. juice. And if you say, Okay, I memorized there it is. I, I, I'm not gonna forget. Mm. You are lying. Sorry, bro. <laughs> you need to refresh. You need yeah. to revise every day, every day. What my uh, lecture say uh, was, even today, when I recite the Quran, I learn new things mm. compared to my, you know, young ages. Yeah, yeah, yeah. When I was young. I used to re recite the Quran. It told me different things mm. than today. Subhanallah. That's how it is. That's how the Quran is. Every time you open it, you learn something yeah, new. Alhamdulillah. You take something new in. Mashallah. It's amazing. Uh, okay, moving on now to. Uh, <laughs> I gave you a break. <laughs> so now, <laughs> and now I'm moving on <laughs> to uh, the imitation, inshallah. Okay. Um, who do you want to start with? I think we talked about Mahir. Yes. Um, of the summit, yeah. Then, so maybe, maybe for example, yeah, yeah, well. yeah, yeah, okay. But I would like to start by Mahir. Yes. Inshallah. So this is Sheikh Mahir. Just to clarify, in case people don't know, this is Sheikh <laughs> Mahir and Muaykali, uh, and he is currently still the Imam oh, in the in the Haram, and very uh, you know distinct, uh, unique uh, tune he has. Mashallah. Bismillah. Bismillah <clears throat> rahman rahim سبح اسم ربك الأعلى الذي خلق فسوى والذي قدر فهدى والذي أخرج المرعى فجعله غثاء أحوى سنقرئك فلا تنسى إلا ما شاء الله إنه يعلم الجهر وما يخفى ونيسرك لليسرى فذكر إن نفعت الذكرى سيذكر من يخشى ويتجنبها الأشقى الذي يصلى النار الكبرى ثم لا يموت فيها ولا يحيا قد أفلح من تزكى وذكر اسم ربه فصلى بل تؤثرون الحياة الدنيا 
والآخرة خير وأبقى إن هذا لفي الصحف الأولى صحف إبراهيم وموسى Mashallah, that was very, very good, very accurate. Actually, Mashallah. There's the, again, like I said, there's some, there's a few things that Sheikh Mahid does. Yeah, is very unique. No, none of the imams they, they do that. It's just some of the, you know, like the stretches, the way he does it. Uh, very unique. Mashallah, I think that was very good, very good. <laughs> <Thank> mashallah. <you>. <laughs> Who should we do next? Uh, let's uh, carry on with today's. Okay. Yeah. Because so s- today's. Fatiha is very famous mm. because everyone knows yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> when he starts. When he starts, <laughs> absolutely. Let's begin with that. Inshallah. This is another Imam from the Haram still in Mecca. Bismillah. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen Ar Rahman Ar Rahim Malik Yawm الدين إياك نعبد وإياك نستعين إهدنا الصراط المستقيم صراط الذين أنعمت عليهم غير المغضوب عليهم ولا Yeah, it's that. It's especially the ending, you know. Yeah. And then when you stretch that, you can you know. So this is that. So this is ending. Mashallah. Yeah. Really, I think, and obviously, I think for everyone, that's who we listen to growing up. It's just so famous that voice. Everyone knows it. You know, we took a video in Turkey with my friends. Yeah. Uh, Alhamdulillah. Right now, um, it's it has been viewed more than four point four. F- 4.4 million really? on YouTube. Mashallah. Alhamdulillah, imitations. Wow, mashallah. Actually, before taking this video, we didn't think it's going to be yeah, yeah. Uh, like that. But Alhamdulillah, people paid attention yeah, 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 yeah. that much. Then, Alhamdulillah, I received many, many messages on uh, Instagram and other yeah. social media accounts. And they said, I am telling my son, look, this is your role model. You wow. need to be like this. So you need wow. to be like this, your big brother. Alhamdulillah. Because when I was a child, Mashallah. my mother and father didn't tell me, you mm. need to be like this, your big brother. Yeah. That was no because, right? But Alhamdulillah, thanks to social media, people could, you know, show their mm. children uh, how they should be. Yeah, you know? yeah. look, do like this, because look at him, Mashallah. kind of. Alhamdulillah. I mean, that's why our responsibility is huge. Mm. We need to be very careful what we are doing, especially on the social media. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's a different topic, actually. But people, you know, are taking us as a role model. Mm. Even though we are not really deserve this position, mm. but we need to, alhamdulillah, pay attention for this specific topic. No, that's very good to hear. It's just so, you know, especially as a recite of Quran, very easy you can upload your uh, recitation. Yeah. And it's not just um, so people can say, wow, mashallah, this is amazing. But actually it does inspire a lot of people to yeah. try to become like that. And that's the same way we feel from our childhood, like Sheikh Sudeis or yes. Sheikh Abdul Samad, listening to them, will inspire you, oh, I want to get to that level. Exactly. Uh, or even better. And there's nothing wrong with that. And I think that's inshallah. the beauty of it, inshallah. Alhamdulillah. <laughs> Let's do one one last one, inshallah. Okay. Hardest one. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> Look at my personality. <laughs> you changed <laughs> you it. See? Completely. Yeah, yeah, interesting. <clears throat> I will try duha. Oh, yes. Inshallah. بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم والضحى والليل إذا سجى ما ودعك ربك وما قلى خير لك من الأولى ولا 
سوف يعطيك ربك فترضى صدق الله ما شاء الله that was very ما شاء الله amazing may Allah bless you uh, that, that was very amazing ما شاء الله just every time you hear it uh, that style it, you, again you know it's Sheikh Abdul Basad of Samad and it brings back, you know, it just every time you hear it, it's just so yeah. powerful. It brings back so many memories. Allah Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. Amazing. So, like you said, this obviously took you a lot of practice, sure. uh, imitation, uh, a lot of listening, a lot of effort behind it. What last few tips would you give, you know, to, especially nowadays, mashallah, we have a lot of young young people. They're trying to memorize Quran. They're trying to recite the Quran nicely. They're trying to learn. What would you say to them? Yeah, actually, we didn't mention about the style of Ottoman to mm. memorize the Quran. Oh, yes, Let me yes. Begin. Um, firstly, for example, uh, let's uh, look at the example of first juice. Mm. When you go to the school to memorize the Quran, firstly, you are expected to memorize the last juice of the Quran. Mm. Juz Amma, we yes. call. If you uh, succeed in memorizing this part, thereafter you are teachers think okay he can be a hafiz mm. or she can be a hafiz then we start to memorize at the end of the first juice means waqalu kunu hudan oh page. really yeah oh, okay let me <laughs> continue <laughs> then for example today i memorized the last page of first juice i recited to my teacher yeah then tomorrow the second juice but the last page فَلَمَّا فَصَلَهُ okay okay very interesting All right. then the third fourth fifth till the thirtieth last okay. page last, last page. page okay then I, fi- I memorized 30 pages mm-hmm. okay in a month then I go back to first juice and I memorized the 19th pages of first juice 19th page of the first juice which is وَإِذْ يَرْفَعُ إِبْرَاهِيمُ الْقَوَاعِدَ مِنَ الْبَيْتِ وَإِسْمَعِيلِ but I am reciting I am giving my a lesson to my teacher both of them وَإِذْ يَرْفَعُ and وَقَالُوا كُونُ which means I am repeating what I have recited last month what I recited today mm. you know what I mean? okay, yeah, yeah then the second one third one till the beginning of the juice when you yeah. uh, memorize the, I mean, 20 pages of the juice, you became a hafiz by repeating what you've received, what mm. you have recited in the past. And you do that with every juice. Every juice and every month. Wow. You know what I mean? And it makes your hafiz very strong. Wow. And if you, res- if you memorize and if you leave that, you are going to inevitably... Uh, forget that mm. but this is the method of Ottoman Empire when I said to my overseas friends like <laughs> in the UK for example yeah, yeah. they were sure why I know, <laughs> why I know are you doing it. like this it's very strange to hear that I mean w- when you first said okay memorize 30 of Jews yeah, first that's okay y- that's normal we, yeah. everyone did that in fact I learned 30 of Jews 29th Jews first okay that makes sense but then <laughs> when you said the ba- yeah. when you learned it backwards we i've never heard this before so yeah, but this i can is the i can imagine that it would be very effective for mm-hmm. memorization um but then does it does it not confuse you because you did it backwards so then when you start reciting from elif lam meme mm-hmm. until the end of the juz is is not it's not confusing because no. you learned it the other way because you recite uh as in the as in the stage of revelation not yeah. Because you start to um, <coughs> uh, recite وَإِذْ يَرْفَعُ Then after تِلْكَ أُمَّةٌ قَدْ حَلَتْ For example mm. وَلَا تُسْأَلُونَ أَمَّا كُنْتُمْ تَعْمَلُونَ وَقَالُوا كُونُ Right yeah. I see. But when it comes to memorizing From the end towards the beginning so Very different yeah. Wow, and that's how you did it as well Yes, yeah? that's right But like specifically, personally I used to memorize at the bottom of the page Till the top Okay For example, again let's Take the example of, for example, when I said tomorrow, the 11th juice. For example, وَيِّ يَمْسِسْكَ اللَّهُ بِدُرِّنْ فَلَا كَاشِفَ لَهُ إِلَّا هُ At the bottom you see uh, وَإِن تَوَلَّوْا uh, أَلَا إِنَّهُمْ يَثْنُونَ صُدُورَهُمْ At the bottom. You memorize the last verses, verse of the page. Then the another one, mm-hmm. the another one, the another one, till the 
top but you you re revise your page by reciting at the top towards mm. the end but kind of building a i mean like constru constructing a building mm. you know you begin the, the foundation foundation yeah. You build your way up. Yeah, way up. Exactly. Wow. Wow. Okay, Marshall. I think that's going to be... And I, I found a very powerful s method, but yeah. it works someone mm. on someone else. Perhaps it doesn't. Yeah, yeah, Just yeah. a tip. They can try. Okay. Very interesting. Very I interesting. mean, uh, but generally, you, for example, how, do, how did you memorize? When I memorized, we... So, let's just say it was first Juz. Obviously, we did it in the from the beginning hmm. of the juz uh, and we would normally do at the beginning you're expected to learn about 13 lines so in the 13 line mushaf yeah about one page mm -hmm. um so you know that's that's the minimum you do and then mm -hmm. the more you go along so the way i would memorize is in the night time the night before oh, yeah. i would just read mm -hmm. no not memorize just read it so from alif lam mim until let's say um you know right okay. so i'm reading 13 lines 14 lines uh, and I just keep reading 10, 15, 20 times from beginning to end. Okay. I don't like the method where you repeat every verse. Hmm. So for example, إِنَّ الَّذِينَ كَفَرُوا سَوَاءُنَ عَلَيْهِمْ أَنْذَرْتَهُمْ أَمْ لَمْ تُنْذِرْهُمْ لَا يُؤْمِنُونَ إِنَّ الَّذِينَ كَفَرُوا I don't like doing that. Hmm. I like doing it from beginning to end, yeah. reading. So Because I get confused. Okay. If you're just doing one verse, move on to the next verse, it's like it's not flowing for me. Oh, I like yeah. the flow. Got so it. then I did that in the night time. Then, when I woke up, subhanAllah, in the morning, because it's it the last there. thing I did, is there. Wow, so, great. so I wake up in the morning, early, Fajr time, uh, and obviously I'm younger, so, yeah. you know, <laughs> so then I start reading, I start reciting, and within five minutes, That's everything's there. MashaAllah. And, and my memory was there. So then MashaAllah. in the evening, I read it to the teacher, night time, same method. Great. Um, it took me longer. Uh, you did mashallah one and a half years I did it in about uh, double that time hmm. it took me three years um, but alhamdulillah it was effective uh, and that's how that's how we did but, it but uh, let me tell you my uh, what my teacher says yeah, yeah. memorizing starts when you finish it <laughs> memorizing yeah, starts yeah, yeah. when you finish it this is the key I mean the majority of her first they memorize, but unfortunately mm. they forget. That's the not point, okay? Yeah. It's meaningless. And to keep in mind, when you actually finish your memorization, yes, that's mm. your duty to revise every day. Because yeah. you are chosen. What Allah says in the Quran is, ثُمَّ الْكِتَابَ الَّذِينَ اصْطَفَيْنَا مِنْ عِبَادٍ mm. And we gave the Quran uh, our slaves that we choose mm. not all of us not every yeah. one of us half us right of but فَمِنْهُمْ ظَالِمٌ لِنَفْسِهِ mm. and the third, pay, third uh, stage is وَمِنْهُمْ سَابِقٌ بِالْخَيْرَاتِ بِإِذْنِ mm. and they raise in doing good things we should be there yeah, yeah. ذَلِكَ oh. هُوَ الْفَضْلُ الْمُبِينَ May Allah make us among them, inshallah. I mean, and it's, it's so interesting you said that the same thing that you said that your memorization when mm -hmm. you complete your Tahfiz al Quran, it begins actually when you finish. Yeah. The same thing my teachers said really? when we finished, not Hivs, when we finished our Alimiya, oh, yeah. the Sharia studies, Arabic language, we did. So imagine you've done six years, yeah. seven years, every day you're studying, you know, eight hours. Tafsir, Hadith, Arabic language, Fiqh, Ulum this, Ulum that. Did that six years and you think, okay, inshallah, I'm finished. This is it, right? They said, okay, today you finished. Today you are now Talib al Ilm. Allah. You're not uh, Alim, you're not Sheikh. Today you're Talib al Ilm. Today you're, it begins for you. Yeah. Because now you need to study further. You need to think about how to implement it. You need to give to your community. It's not now, okay, I'm done. So, yeah. subhanAllah is. Uh, a lot of work. Yeah, know? let me tell this one. It is very interesting. Yeah. For, for example, we say uh, jahil and yeah. alim. Why? Mm. Because I I am pretty sure. Yeah. Jahil who doesn't know what he doesn't know. Mm. You know what we I call mean? it jahil murakkab. Yeah. <laughs> if he knew, if he knew, he would be alim. Mm. Because Alim knows what he doesn't know. Mm. <laughs> Look, very, you know, <laughs> it's, it's deep as well. Yeah, yeah very deep. 
And when I say this one, uh, makes sense for people to reflect, because Alim knows what he doesn't know. That's why he's Alim. Imam yeah. Azam said, "If I put what I don't know under my feet, my head is gonna be on the heaven." You know. Subhanallah. <laughs> we don't know. We are jahil, and Allah is Alim, Hakim. Mm. And inshallah, with this alhamdulillah attitude, as a inshallah talibul ilm, towards the end, mm. we need to be on the journey of ilm. Of no, course, inshallah. Inshallah, inshallah. It's been a pleasure having you on. Subhanallah. Yeah, I, there's so pleasure. much more Believe me. we can uh, <laughs> we can discuss. Uh, and mashallah, uh, every time I meet you, mashallah, your English is getting much better. You know, well, I just <laughs> last year learned. <laughs> yeah, Sorry, yeah, yeah, I apologize about no, 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 no. my bad English because no, I just last year came to London to learn English. I used to knew ju- used to know just few you know yeah, sentences. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What's your name? How are you? <laughs> How old are you? This, but Alhamdulillah, right Alhamdulillah. now I'm doing Master at Saas University yeah, Islamic Alhamdulillah. Studies. Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. I'm very happy because if I didn't know this language, you wouldn't invite me, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah, and yeah. Alhamdulillah, that's why, for example, let, we begin speaking with Ottoman Empire. Yeah, Let's yeah, yeah. finish it with Ottoman. <laughs> Fatih, Fatih Sultan Mahmed, we called uh, yeah. um, conqueror of yeah. the Constantinople. He used to speak more than seven languages. Mm. When he was eight years old, he was a hafiz, oh. and he used to he used to write magnificent poets mm. in different languages. Mm. Because you know, when you speak a language, it doesn't mean you are a master of the language, right? Yeah, true. But if you give different, you know, uh, works mm. in a specific language, yes, yeah, you yeah. are playing with the language. Mm. And he used to write many different poets in Persian mm. in Italian you know wow. he used to get a conversation with uh, the leader of Christians in Italy in Italian right in Greek language wow you know he even look this is my actually uh, I assert that if he wasn't a leader he would be very famous poetry very famous writer mm. I don't know very pa- famous uh, like com- uh, commander mm. because he invented the special things then he was able to conquer, conquer yeah, yeah, the yeah. Constantinople wow mashallah. how many languages do you speak? Ah, <laughs> I am very poor about that <laughs> just Arabic uh, English and Turkish oh, mashallah still at least uh, you went to study Arabic and English you had to study that mashallah yeah, no, but I wish inshallah I, I, I inshallah. could speak more than because when you get in the Islamic uh, area or in the signs mm. you feel knowing different languages will give you benefit mm. so much oh, yeah, benefit 100%. right yeah. because when you look at the German uh, sources you can understand you can obtain what they think mm. when you look at the verse, uh, English writer approaches you can understand what they think on Islam yeah, and yeah. you can answer mm. but if you don't know you can just listen mm. right that's why for me and it comes from the it is getting a bit longer but it comes from the story of Zayd bin Sabit mm. Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa said to him learn different languages mm. Hebrew Syriac yeah. Yeah, he he no, he he learned in a small amount of days, and this is the approaches of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Alhamdulillah, barakallah fiq, Hafiz Osman. It's always a pleasure to see <laughs> oh, you, and thank you pleasure. so much for being on thank on feed And I'm thank sure our viewers and listeners they enjoyed your advice, they enjoyed your recitation. And may Allah SWT bless you and all the best with your masters. Oh, uh, and Thanks. next time we call you, you're going to be even more fluent in English as well. Inshallah. <laughs> Inshallah, Inshallah, definitely. Amin, Inshallah. Amin. Inshallah. Maybe I need to start learning Turkish as well. Yeah, so sure. You can take some private <laughs> <Why> lessons. <laughs> <laughs> so, alhamdulillah, uh, it's been an absolute pleasure to have uh, Hafiz Osman uh, on the Ilmfeed podcast. We hope you all enjoyed it as well, Inshallah. Uh, for myself, I really enjoyed it. Got a proper uh, uh, Ottoman vibe uh, on today's show, alhamdulillah. Um, be sure to check out uh, the work of our dear brother, uh, Hafiz Osman. And uh, how can we find you on social media? I mean, uh, I'm on Instagram, on YouTube. If they just search Osman Bostanji, yeah. Osman Bostanji, you say, and they can find, inshallah, on inshallah. Instagram, on YouTube, on Facebook. We are everywhere. <laughs> <You know? laughs> and, inshallah. Uh, additionally, my hashtag is Quran is everywhere. 
Oh, okay. uh, I'm doing these works this and yeah. reciting outside and showing the verses of the Quran. Yeah. It's related to places yeah. and to make more influence on the audience. Inshallah. Inshallah. Thank you so much. And uh, we hope you enjoyed this one. Until next time, we'll see you then. Of course, subscribe to us here uh, on the Ilmfi channel on YouTube and on iTunes. A lot more coming your way. Take care of yourselves. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.